Hi, I'm Rick Sellens. I'd like to show you today a little bit about how to use my multimeter app in case you don't have a multimeter, but you do have a microcontroller board. And after we've learned how to load it and use it, then I'll walk you through the code if you want to understand how it works inside. This is our little microcontroller kit that we're using. And if we don't have a multimeter like this one, we'll need to use the microcontroller to make some measurements. Now I can measure with my uh, multimeter what the actual voltages are on the microcontroller. So the power supply voltage, 3.30 volts. We might also want to know exactly the value of that resistance there. That's nominally a 10K resistance, brown, black, orange, one, zero, and three more zeros for 10,000 ohms. In the kit that was mailed out to you, you might find a note saying just exactly what we've measured this resistance to be and just exactly what we've measured this power supply voltage to be for your particular microcontroller. In this video, we're going to load up the Arduino code to run our uh, multimeter app on this little microcontroller. We'll set that reference voltage and this reference resistance in the code so that it knows how to do the calculations. Then we'll run through the process of calculate or of measuring rather a DC voltage. We'll measure continuity, that is whether something's connected. We'll measure an approximate value for resistance as we might with the multimeter. And then I'll show you how to hook up a photocell right on our multimeter circuit so that you can do some testing. But for today, you don't have a multimeter and you need to make do with just the stuff that you got in the mail. Open the Arduino IDE and you'll get a blank sketch like this. We'll need to find the file that we're looking for. So let's open and on my computer, I've got it under documents, courses, under Rick's notes, on GitHub. And here's the code that you will have downloaded from GitHub. Under Arduino, in the learning sequence for the SAMD processor that we're using this year, we find the multimeter app and we open it. So there's that multimeter app, big enough to be readable. We now need to make sure that our board is set properly to an itsy bitsy M0. So under uh, Adafruit SAMD boards, itsy bitsy M0. And we need to make sure that we pick the right port the right serial port that actually has the itsy bitsy attached to it. Once we've done that, we can open up the serial monitor by pressing that little uh, magnifying glass and we'll see what's coming back from the microcontroller. Right now we've got nothing coming from the microcontroller. So if we press the arrow key, we should compile the code and download it to the uh, microcontroller and start seeing some data coming back. So here we can see it's uploading the microcontroller. It looks like it succeeded. And this gives us some instructions. And every couple of seconds, it's giving us some new readings for what time it is, what the voltages are on various pins, what the difference in voltage is between two pins, and what resistance it's measuring between pin five and ground. So I'm going to put that on auto scroll so it keeps giving us a new value roughly every four seconds. I'll take this jumper, this black one, and attach it to the ground plane, the blue connections here. I'll take this white one and I'll attach it to pin A5, which is that one right there at one end of the resistor. I'll take the blue one here and attach it to pin three. And the purple one and attach it to pin four. From pin one, if we change the position of the potentiometer, we see a different voltage showing up on pin one. Pin three, that's this blue one, 
Well, if I connect it to ground, on pin three, I see a voltage very close to zero being measured. If I connect it to our positive voltage over here, on pin three, I see a voltage very close to 3.3 being measured. And if I connect pin four to ground, then when I look to see the difference between pin four near zero and pin three near 3.3, I'll see the difference is actually negative about 3.3 because it's taking four at pin four at about zero and subtracting pin three at about 3.3. If we switch those around, plug them into the same spot, we see the difference go to zero. Reverse the connection, we see the difference now is positive about 3.3. So we can measure individual voltages relative to ground, or with pins three and four, we can measure the difference between two voltages. So that's how we can measure DC voltage. Continuity, we measure between pin five and ground. Pin five right now has this one resistor here and then an open circuit. It's not connected to anywhere. However, if I connect it directly to ground, I see the resistance change from a very large number to a very small number. Not absolutely zero, but very close to zero. And that suggests that we've got continuity. That is, that the connection is almost direct. On the other hand, if we wanted to measure the resistance of a component, then I would have to connect one side of the resistor to ground and connect the other side of the resistor to pin five. And we're now reading about 4,800, 4,840 ohms uh, as the value of this resistance. Let's try with another resistor and measure and now we're seeing about 278 ohms. So this is a resistance that's about 4,800 ohms. This is a resistance that's down closer to two or 300 ohms. And if we look at the markings on the side, we can use the color code to find out what the nominal resistance is of this resistor as manufactured. So we've measured DC voltage, we've measured continuity, and we've measured resistance by comparing what's happening between pin five and ground. This is the photocell that we'll use in some of our labs. If I connect it between pin five and ground, we'll get an indication of the resistance of the photocell. So right now with the light shining on it, the photocell is showing a resistance of about, just about 1600 ohms. If I put it in the shade, the resistance goes up dramatically. So using this approach, we can measure resistance and we can measure how it changes with time. And that's gonna be important in our course. If you have an actual measured value for the resistance that's attached to pin five, or for the actual regulator voltage of your particular microcontroller, the place to put it in is right here at lines 11 and 12. So suppose we knew that our voltage was 3.284 was what we had actually measured. And that our 10,000 ohm resistor, it was actually 10,134. We could put those values in, recompile the code, and we would get slightly different values over here when we were making our measurements. So the more accurate these numbers are, the more accurate the results are going to be when you do the calculation over here. Now I'd like to run through how this multimeter code works, just as an overview. I know this is getting a little bit ahead of things, but maybe it'll help ring some bells with your past C programming as well. 
start off by including this uh, real-time clock library because it's needed for some of our printing functions. Define a couple of global variables so that they're available all through the code, not just within a particular function. Then these defines just tell us that whenever we say, for example, LED pin, we really mean 13. That's the pin on the microcontroller that has an LED attached to it that we can see turn on and off. Likewise, our button is attached to pin 12 and we're setting pin two high so that we can use that as part of the circuit that lets us measure resistance on pin five. These are our reference values for our uh, voltage reference and our resistance reference. And those should be nominally 3.3 and 10,000. Because all of our boards are set up with nominally 3.3 volt regulation and nominally a 10,000 ohm resistor installed. We've got a couple of double constants here that we can use to uh, do conversions for analog to digital conversion. This is the conversion from analog into millivolts. And what that says is that there's gonna be 65 uh, counts per millivolt if we have 16 bit resolution. Or if we wanna convert from an analog value to voltage, this says that we're gonna have 65,535 steps spread over the range from zero up to VREF. So this is just some constants we can use for our conversion. This setup function, this void means this is a setup, this is a function that we're declaring that returns nothing. And the empty parentheses means it takes no arguments either. Setup functions called once, the beginning of the execution, and it does all of the code in the function and then returns. So we'll set the LED pin to output so that we can turn the LED on and off and we'll write a high value out to that pin so that the light should go on. We'll begin serial communications. That's what lets us talk to the serial monitor. And then we'll wait until the serial set up or five seconds have gone by. We print out a whole lot of stuff. That's the stuff that you see at the beginning of the program. And then we wait two seconds. Looks like we've got a duplicate of the code here for that LED pin. Doing it twice won't do any harm. The button pin, we're going to put in input pull-up mode. That means instead of writing to that button pin, we're gonna be reading that button pin. And if there's nothing attached to that button, we'd like to pull it up to the 3.3 volt voltage. The high pin, we're going to make output and we're gonna write a high value to that pin. So it'll be at 3.3 volts for our resistance circuit. We're gonna set the read resolution to 16. That's 16 bits of resolution so that we can get a better picture of uh, the, the voltage values. And we'll set A0 and A2 both to output and make one of them a low value and one of them a high value. This lets us have that potentiometer on there so that pin one that's right in between can be adjusted with the potentiometer. And then because we're finished, we're gonna turn the LED off just so that we can see we got through setup. Then there's this function called loop. Again, it doesn't return anything, so we declare it with the keyword void. And it has no arguments so that we can't pass anything to it. After setup runs, loop will run repeatedly. The code inside this loop function will run, it'll return, and it'll be immediately called again. So this will just go round and round and round every time. We define some variables. And then we're going to read some analog values. And we're going to do it a thousand times with a for loop. We're gonna take the value from analog read 
and multiply it by the conversion from analog into voltage to get a voltage value. And we're going to repeat that for V3, V4, V5, and so on. Down here, we're going to accumulate some values uh, for the total of all of those 1,000 values of V1 and the total of all of those 1,000 values of V1 squared. So this will allow us to calculate a mean and an RMS or standard deviation. And we'll do that for all the different values. And then we'll go through all those different values and we'll divide by a thousand to get the average value for each of them. This is our continuity indicator. If the uh, resistance is low enough, then we're gonna set the LED pin high. We're gonna turn that LED light on to indicate continuity. Otherwise, we're going to set it low. Then, if the time now, the microseconds value minus the time when we last printed is greater than about 2,000, or sorry, about 2 million, or the digital read of the button pin, the button's pushed, then we'll set our last printing to right now and print a whole lot of stuff. That's what's printing out each of these blocks of stuff as we go along, jumping about every two seconds. Then finally, we'll note at the end of our, our loop that the time now, well, we'll set that value into time last. We'll wait a couple of milliseconds, and then we'll do the whole thing over again back up at the top of the loop. So that's how the code in this multimeter uh, sketch works. It goes through, it makes an average measurement on multiple inputs, and then it does some calculations from that average measurement. It provides you with voltage values and RMS voltages to give you an indication of how much noise there is on the circuit. If this description of how the code worked was a little too difficult for you to follow, don't be worried. We're going to be starting with some much simpler code and working our way up to this. But by the end of term, you should be able to write code like this yourself.